Hey everyone, Wylock here. Welcome back. And today we're going to make a model that is similar to and inspired by, but definitely not the same as, an Imperial Knight. Now, why do this, right? I mean, look at it, and then look at the real thing. Well, I've been in a bit of a slump lately. Whatever writer's block is for, like, YouTube, crafter, tutorial people, I have that. So to just get through it, I sat down one Saturday, I looked around me, and I just felt like cobbling this together. Didn't go and buy any new supplies, no 3D printed supplementing. This is just old school found object crafting, just to get the juices flowing. Now obviously, none of you are going to be able to exactly recreate this build because you don't have the exact junk that I have lying around. The idea is that hopefully it teaches you a little bit about how to look at things differently. That's also part of the reason that I did this. I want to get better at that. I'm a literalist. I'm not particularly imaginative. I think DM Scotty is the king of that. But anyway, this was a fun exercise and let's go build this model. Now I'm not going to go through every single thing I did in excruciating detail, rather this will be sort of a high level overview. So for the main body I reverse engineered a rough shape from the actual model. You can download this template if you want, there's a link in the video description below. So I cut out those shapes on some chipboard, my favorite crafting material. And then I hot glued slabs of foam board to connect them together, and this is how I set the width. For the record, the middle section was 33 millimeters, and the two side sections are 10 millimeters. Then with cereal box or other solid cardstock, cut some strips and hot glue them along those curves to form the top of the chassis. Then hot glued the two side chunks on, using that upper back lip as a reference to line them up. Then just continue to cover up everything with cereal box and hot glue, as well as start adding on some armor banding. Now this is the top of a children's applesauce pouch, parents will surely recognize it. I'm going to cut that bit out of the middle, and then chop it in half and hot glue it on. This is the cowl. The mask will be this plastic Halloween ring. I don't remember where it came from, maybe a craft swap or something. So cut the ring portion off of that, but then I had no way to mount it. So I took some random spherical shaped bead, hot glued that to the body, and hot glued the mask to it. For the legs, so these wooden bits here, if you've been in a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or other crafting store, you probably recognize these. They tend to show up in those various mixed bags of wooden shapes. These will be the hip joints. I connected them by injecting a drinking straw with hot glue to give it strength, and then hot gluing one hip on each end, holding them at a slight angle while the glue cools so that the legs will kind of be spread out in that classic battle-ready stance. Oh, but I forgot one thing, the waist, so back up. So from chipboard, I cut a bunch of these U-shaped pieces and used a hole punch and glued like eight of them together, threaded it onto the hip bar, and then attached the second hip. And that whole assembly just gets hot glued to the bottom of the chassis like this. Here's some 3 8 inch wooden dowel. It's either basswood or balsa, but it's extremely soft, easily cut with just a crafting or utility knife. You can get it at any crafting store. And this is a miniature Grand Marnier bottle, and I'm going to use its bottle cap as a knee. First, I tricked it up with a gear, super glue to attach. Moving on to the shin guards. This is a hair curler from the dollar store. We used this before to make ladders, you might recall from episode 125 with the Sector Mechanicus expansions. Anyway, I just snipped that to the height that I needed and later on I wrapped it with cereal box. For the feet, I noticed in one of my random bit boxes these parts from a kid's meal toy, I think from Wendy's. And one of them is the perfect size for a knight's foot. Also, I found these small black caps. I think they were protective covers for threaded rod or something in shipping. Anyway, we took another bit of square dowel, then I drilled a hole in one end and glued in some kebab skewer and chopped that down. Then I removed the webbing from this toy piece and attached the cap to the center to serve as the ankle joint. Super glued the dowel to the knee. then glued the whole leg to the hip, and finally filled those caps with hot glue and set the legs into them. 
both at the same time so that I could position the entire mech at the right angle with both feet flat as the glue cooled and hardened. Here's where it's at so far. This is a little toy car, it's the kind you can pull back to wind up the rubber band engine. You let go and it takes off. So I did some surgery here. I took it apart, found that wind up engine inside. Perfect to use for Greeble as the actuators on the leg. So I just stuck it on there where the calf would be, and then super glued a gear on for good measure. While I was at it, the hips as well. Back to the junk bin, here's some random Lego Technics piece. I'm just going to stick that on the back along with another gear. And now for the pauldrons. This is an applesauce cup. I measured out the width I wanted, I think it was 30 millimeters, and I sliced that up, then chopped it directly in half. Use cereal box to trim out the edge, and I cut a circle of chipboard to cover those logos stamped in the bottom of the cup. For the toes, I just covered with more cereal box, cutting small pieces and hot gluing them on kind of tedious. Short segments of leftover sprue, super glued on the legs as random greeble. The smokestacks are just drinking straws wrapped in cereal box and then cut to fit the curve, then hot glued onto the top of the chassis. So now it's out to the garage to prime this thing. I like Krylon matte primer. Good price, good performance. Okay, real quick before we go finish this thing up, the usual annoying stuff, like, subscribe, reminder bell. Want to support the channel totally free? Use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below when you buy stuff. Totally transparent to you, the only difference is that I get a small kick from Amazon for having referred you. Our sponsor is Heroes Horde, an outstanding source of models for you 3D printers out there, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines. And don't miss my D&D 5th edition one-shot modules over on the DMs Guild. So the thigh plates and groin plate I just cut freehand out of chipboard. And I painted up all these parts so far. This thing is obviously not even detailable, so I just laid down base coats and gradients with my airbrush. Five minutes. Also I had this base prepared, good to go. So I assembled everything with some hot glue. Now to build some weapons. What I have here is a solid plastic straw, the kind from a kid's drink cup and another applesauce pouch cap. I cut off the wings, chopped the straw down to size, and then glued them together, along with a shield piece cut out of chipboard. That, in turn, gets attached to a two inch long square tube of chipboard, which I trimmed out with more sprue greeble. And for the arm itself, more of that wooden dowel from earlier. For the chain sword, I cut two rectangles of chipboard and clipped one corner. Then took this plastic canvas mesh, sometimes called granny grating. It's for cross stitching. You can find it in any crafting supply store. Anyway, I just hot glued that mesh in between these two slabs to make a sandwich and cut away the excess, leaving the chain teeth. And again, that just gets hot glued to a box with greeble on it and the arm. From there, it was another five or 10 minutes to paint them. You wouldn't even call this speed painting. I don't know what it is, slap dash, get her done. But nonetheless, done it is. And so I'll just show him to you with some terrain for context. Again, I want to reiterate, this was an exercise in creativity for myself and for the channel. Obviously, you should not build something like this and expect to take it to an event or arguably even your local game store. It's a good proxy for thrifty basement gaming. I hope that along the way you saw some material or trick or technique that's useful to you as a crafter. That was kind of my intent here. Just a treasure box tour de force of good old fashioned found object crafting. The downside of course is that with these materials you're not really going to be able to do any classic detailing like edge highlighting. I was even worried about doing any washes since there's so many glue and material types in there. Who knows what would succumb to moisture so I left it looking pretty boring but at least it's structurally sound. It does feel very solid. Anyway if there's something you saw in this video that you'd like me to expand upon in the future let me know in a comment below. If you like this particular project, here's two more you might want to check out. Also, enjoy this community showcase. I'm Wylock, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.